Espana 20 is the last installment in the Napoleonics 20 system, a system to simulate battles of the Napoleonic Age uh, in a very simple, accessible format, uh, very few rules, entryway level or complexity, very playable and manageable games because, as the number in the title says, there are approximately only 20 units on the board, and 20 units includes units for both sides. So very low count of units to manage on the board. Definitely not a monster, a monster game or a system for monster games. Uh, these games, um, uh, the Napoleonic 20 system, started coming out some years ago in small Ziploc bags, then Victory point uh, uh, games the publisher upgraded to small boxes and now we have Napoleonic's 20 games coming out in large boxes. Espana 20, as the name tells you, um, uh, covers the Peninsular War during the Napoleonic times. In particular, this set here includes two battles, Bailen and Arapiles. Arapiles being another name for the Battle of Salamanca, from the name of the hills around Salamanca where the actual battle took place. And this video I'm not going to repeat in detail the rules of the Napoleonic 20 system. I did that in previous videos already just to give you a very quick overview in case you're not familiar with the system or you want a little refresher it's super simple each turn starts with uh, drawing a an event card each player uh, before playing uh, draws a, uh, an event card when you hear about cards, very often you think, oh, this is a game that's not going to work well in solitaire. This is not a hand of cards that you have and you keep secret from the opponent. So actually these uh, random events that come from cards increase the solo ability of the game because you do not know what's going to happen next. So a random event at first, then you move your units. The opponent gets a chance of responding to that with some of their units, usually with cover units that can counter charge or that can disengage, and then units that are adjacent to units of the opponent after the possible reaction of the opponent uh, have to resolve combat. This is a game which is also controls control that are very um, sticky once you get in contact with your opponent, unless there is a game effect that allows you to disengage, you have to stay there until combat is resolved and it is an effect of combat that allows you to uh, detach from the opponent. Combat is resolved in a very simple way, uh, based on combat differential, no complex combat table, ratio, odds, things like that. Combat differential, some modifiers may apply based on terrain, you may decide to spend morale points to increase your chances, you resolve combat and by rolling a die and you see what happens and then there are more things, but this is the general idea. It's a very basic flow uh, that you have here, but with still enough wrinkles and nuances to make it an interesting system if a very simple and accessible one. Let me tell you about Espana 20 more in detail. Map for this scenario about the Battle of Salamanca, which was fought around the hills of Arapiles, hence the name of the scenario. No units start set up on the map in this scenario. Units will enter from here and from here respectively. And because of the connections of roads on the map and because of the location of the objective axis, the units will tend, the units of the two sides will tend to march in lines towards the objectives, which of course they need to defend before the opponent takes control of them. And they will probably clash somewhere in the middle of the of the board. The overall flow of the first day of the battle will also probably be influenced by a very important rule that says that during the first day of battle, so the first couple of turns, uh, the first player to enter the enemy zone of control of the opponent will lose a morale point. This simulates the fact that at this point during the campaign the two armies had been marched, marching parallel to one another for some time and the commanders were kind of like wary of each other. Neither wanted to commit before the opponent did. And so you have that penalty there to simulate that fact and to force the two players to play along historical lines. Now, does all of this 
look familiar? Does it sound familiar what I just said? Does the map look familiar? If you are a player of games in the Napoleonic 20 system, probably it does look familiar. Maybe you were thinking of Salamanca. Salamanca, Sinelio, that was included in the Fading Glory set. Uh, published by GMT in late 2013, maybe in late 2012, maybe early 2013. Arpiles 20 is pretty much a reissue remake of Salamanca 20. And if you just look at the maps, you can see that uh, the maps are very similar. Well, you can expect that since it's the same terrain and it is the same system. But as you can see, we have the same objectives uh, with Salamanca and Salamanca, the river, of course. There are minor differences. For example, here in the new version, there is a space between the two hills, so which are adjacent to one another on this map. But when it is the same system and the same terrain, you can expect similarities. Also, comparing the other half of the map again you see the similarities between the entry areas and again the location of the objectives the rules the special rules also are uh, the same ones uh, here in Salamanca 20 also you have the restriction of uh, about approaching the opponents about making contact with the opponent um, even when it comes to the cards, if you take the cards of Arapiles 20 and the cards of Salamanca 20, you will see some striking differences. Many of these cards are pretty much the same cards, just that in the Salamanca 20 version they look better and they are on a thicker and encoded material and the new ones are not. Here, for example, you have the Vive l'Empereur and Char Charge at All Hazards cards which are the same in both sets requisition horses and caution square and volley imperial eagle captured Espana's nerve and sacred blur and so on and so forth now not all cards in the two sets are exactly the same there are some cards that are slightly different from one another sometimes it's just the title and the phrasing sometimes it is the actual effect uh, there are some cases where you have a card with two effects on it in the old Salamanca 20 and in the new set an effect is on one card and an effect is on another card but the overall idea the feel and in many cases simply the effects of the cards are the same in the two sets. So pretty much uh, Arpiles 20 to me is a reissue of the old Salamanca 20. It is just that I don't remember seeing anything about that, anything to that effect, any sort of disclaimer on the box of the game or in the rule book, uh, in the scenario book, nowhere really. And if I miss that, well that, that's my bad. But if it is somewhere that I haven't seen, that it says this is just a new and slightly edited version of Salamanca 20, well, I miss that. But even if it is there, I think it should be more prominent. Uh, the publisher was kind enough to send me this game as a review copy, but I guess that I had, if I had purchased the game and uh, I had overlooked the fact that our appeal lists uh, could be uh, so similar to Salamanca 20. I would have been a little disappointed uh, when paying to purchase two games and actually finding that one of them I pretty much already own. Now, this is a fun game, this is a great game, and frankly, after our appeal list 20, I haven't played Salamanca 20. 20 again just to see if indeed there were differences. I'm sure that when you have small tweaks, even just like small terrain changes, something does change. But let's face it, the two scenarios still are very, very similar to one another. And I feel pretty confident saying that even if I have not replayed Salamanca 20 after trying our Apiles 20. Uh, even the turn track is the same, same amount of turns, same divisions between day turns and night turns. Arpilus 20, for your information, is a reissue of, uh, of Salamanca 20. If you like that game, that's great, it's just that I'm not sure that you really need a new version of it. Maybe you did think, ah, oh, the game was almost perfect, I wish there was a slightly different version. And maybe your appealist fixes whatever it is that you thought needed fixing in Salamanca 20. 
As for me, it was a little disappointing when I realized that this is a game that was so similar to something that I already had in my collection. By lane 20, the map is represented by actually two maps that you place adjacent to one another. Here, the French are the defenders. They are defending on the northern side of the map and the Spanish are coming from the southern side of the map. Even if you're not using the optional fog of war rules, so here you do set up the two sides uh, using the uh, by placing the counters face down so that the players do not know where the other player exactly has set up things you just revealed those at the beginning of the game there's also a die roll that actually allows the Spanish player here to peek at some of the French units and that represents reconnaissance efforts that were made before the battle actually started uh, here the French have a depot unit which during the game may be transformed into a baggage train and if that happens then the baggage train will try to leave the board from that hex there. Here you have a marker that indicates a status which is in play at the beginning of the game which means which says able to order withdrawal. Yes, the French may decide that the situation is getting a little too bad and they may decide that it's time to order a withdrawal from the map. If they do so, then the uh, French units may leave the board from there and they gain morale points if they do so, if they manage to get units out of the mess. Also, uh, they will not want the baggage train to fall into the hands of the Spanish, so they're trying to get that out too. Uh, but there may be an event that may come from the cards, which is the Hold Andalusia, and if this event is triggered by an event card, then it becomes impossible for the uh, French player to order to order the withdrawal. Then you have to stay, then you have to fight. Uh, there are a couple of other extra rules, uh, such as, for example, about reinforcements and things like that. But generally speaking, no, nothing major, not a game that will feel burdened by a lot of special rules. As for the general feel and flow of the game, um, interesting enough, it felt there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of um, cat and mouse type of uh, situations. How can I explain it? Uh, the game starts with a situation where the French player appears to be outnumbered. There are some not super strong but decent Spanish units that are going against the French player and the French player is trying not to get outmaneuvered since uh, it is not too hard for the Spanish player to concentrate forces in some areas of the map like here or here. Uh, it is possible that the Spanish player will manage to surround or in any case uh, to place French units in a situation of deep embarrassment and you have that uh, in which you have some situations in which the French play is running and the Spanish is pursuing. Then maybe a single Spanish unit will route and will start moving the opposite direction. Now the small group of Spanish pursuers are, is reduced to a single unit and now the French the units manage to actually form a group and now they have enough impetus, enough momentum, uh, enough critical mass to represent the threat to the Spanish unit, the remaining Spanish unit, which at that point starts running in the opposite direction, waiting for the routed friend to rally and to be back to the previous glory. And then there is maybe an encounter, and uh, another fight, this time a single French unit routes, and I think you, you see what's happening here. The flow reverts. I found that this happened fairly often. The map is pretty open. Yes, you have these changes in elevations here, but nothing too major really. It really felt like there was a lot of empty room here, where the small groups, so this is really low count battle, uh, well, very small groups of units were running around a little bit in circles, but I'm not saying this uh, in a negative way. It's not a bad thing at all, because uh, there was a lot of action, a lot of excitement as the 
sides changed roles from the pursuer to the pursuit and vice versa. And as they were trying to outmaneuver each other and to place uh, themselves in a good position to say surround the opponent, to use zones of control in a devious way. So, uh, interesting, very low count, very simple. Um, also no artillery units, so really uh, a very simple scenario to play. Could be a good introduction to the system even if you haven't played the system before. But, uh, but fun, still very fun. Simple, easy and accessible even within the Napoleonic 20 system which is simple and accessible enough, but definitely rewarding and fun to play. So I was not exceedingly overjoyed when I realized that one of the games in this package I already owned in a different form. I talked to Alan Emrich, the publisher, he said that when Salamanca, the Salamanca game came out, they immediately started working on improving it. Uh, I do not know that the original game needed that much improvement because I enjoyed it back then. If you think that it did need improvement, then probably this version will work better. Uh, but what I really like here, rather than a um, Salamanca 2.0, is the Bailen game. The Bailen game is really fun. It is definitely one of the most accessible games in the system. If I were to show the system to somebody who never played the system and maybe never played war games before, Bailen may be a good starting point. Uh, it flows well, it has interesting decisions, it has a flow of the game that definitely is fun because it is full of surprises and it defies a strict dichotomy between defender and attacker. Even when the French player starts retreating, uh, if that happens at all, um, at that point you may still have moments in which the French units turn back to, against the Spanish and temporarily, maybe for just a couple of turns or a couple of combat resolutions, take again on the role of the attacker. So there is a fluid um, exchange of roles there which to me makes the game really fun. Overall, Espana 20, the components look good, uh, the box looks good, it's gonna look great on a shelf, and I know that for some of us who collect the board games, um, the way the box looks is a component, is a factor, no problem here, uh, the quality of the components is pretty high, the maps are not uh, mounted, but other than that, everything really looks great and durable enough. Espana 20, it looks good, it plays well, it has two battles, one of them you may have played in a very similar form in the past and maybe you want to give it another try, or both battles may be new to you. In any case, they're both really uh, fun battles and they have completely different flow and feel from one another, from the uh, from uh, a battle like you have in Salamanca slash Arapiles in which you have pretty strict formations that just clash at some point in parallel lines from a much more scattered situation in which it is about small groups of units that form and, and reform and disgregate around the map and you have a much um, uh, less linear use of the space of the map. Different flow, different pace, different feel, which of course is good. It's better if when you buy a package with two battles, you do find indeed two battles and not two versions of the same battle. Spania 20 by Victory Point Games. Pretty fun. Fun installment, fun new chapter in the Napoleonic 20 system.